Come on, somebody lift him up. Come on, somebody lift him up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Grab your word today. You ever watch that uh, Kentucky Derby, that horse race with all those horses with the weird names that don't make any sense? You ever see that? It's like, who, who named those horses? Whew, that's how I feel today. I, I've been uh, waiting, waiting, just excited about this day, excited about this word. I feel like I've been in the, the gate. You ever seen those horses in the gate? And they, they're jumping all over. They're ready to go. Pastor Dylan gave me the nod. It's time to go. I'm ready. I'm busting out the gate today. God's got a word for you. Amen. Worship team, thank you. Thank you. Well done. Praise the Lord. Grab your Bible. Jump to Revelation 19. I want to honor Pastor and Kathy. Even though they're not with us today, they are sure to watch this later and i just honor you today thank you pastor for letting me come and play in your sandbox today in the pulpit and deliver this word you know as uh, pastors we uh we're always coming up with ideas I, pastor i'll tell you what he's got if you ever have a chance to go to his office he's got i mean more sermons than you can count all folded and cataloged away but he is always writing uh, new sermon titles, new ideas, and I feel like um, I, I've, I've picked up the same, the same trend. And, and I will tell you the Lord's honest truth, this word that I have here for you today, this message that I've been thinking about and praying about, I have had in my spirit for several years at this point. And I have been waiting for the right opportunity when the Lord would think it would be the right time to bring this word to you. And I am so pumped. That's why I said I, I'm feeling my oats today. That's another horse reference. That's number two already. <laughs> I'm feeling my oats today. I'm ready. God's got a word for you today. Somebody's going to leave out of here with more victory and more praise and more excitement than you've ever had in your life today. Come on, somebody. Woo! Simone, somebody. <laughs> Revelation 19, let me just read this victory march to you, this victory line to you. Then I saw heaven opened and a white horse, horse number three, you keeping track, Alec, yeah? That's three, okay. Was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the Word of God. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest pure white linen, followed him on white horses. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty, like juice flowing from the winepress. On his robe at his thigh was written this title, King of all kings and Lord of all lords. I want to speak to you today. The message is entitled, The Last Move. Will you... Raise your hands in this place with me one more time. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you for the opportunity to share it. I pray, Lord, today it would pierce our spirits. I pray today we would leave this place victorious. Lord, I pray that this word today would just get into our spirits. Let it go into our spirits and into our minds and into our hearts and into our bodies. Let us leave this place thinking differently, reacting differently, uh, making different choices, living a different way today. I pray, Holy Spirit, that this word would do what it does, and that is to change the hearts and lives of your people. Father, we are excited that we get to be in your house today. We come ready. We come enthused. We come excited for what you're going to do in this place today. Can somebody lift up the name of Jesus one more time in this place? Come on, like he's done something for you. Like he means something to you. Oh, 
He's been good to me, church. He's been good to me, church. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you in this place today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated, but I'm telling you, church, don't get comfortable. We're going to be worshiping the Lord. We're going to be praising the Lord. He's got a word for you today. I want to take just a moment, and I want to speak to you on this idea of the kingly character of God. We love to look at God as our father. Many of us have great fathers like me, and you love to think about God as a father, and he is a father. By the way, if you're not taking notes today, you are missing out. I just want to encourage you, grab your phone. You don't need to check Facebook, but come on, there's a note section on there somewhere. You can send a huge text to somebody not here. Just send them the whole sermon notes in one giant text. It will take them five hours to read it. It's okay. Hey, I want you to take some notes today. I want to talk about the kingly character of God. We like to think about God as our Father. We like to think God as our provider. We like to think about God in all these things. But how often do we think about God as a king? You know, here in the culture that we live in today, in our Western minds, it is really hard for us to understand kingship. We like to think that we know what a king is because we've seen it in the movies, but we honestly don't understand what kingship really means. We like to think we have an idea, but honestly, we probably don't even scratch the surface on what it means that there is a king and we live in a kingdom. There is a king, let me say it again, and we live in a kingdom. God is the king, amen? He, Amen? <laughs> you think today you're taking the day off, uh-uh, folks. I'm going to report the number of praise breaks to pastor when he returns, and if it's under 10, I'm getting docked here. Okay, I'm just kidding. Hey, we serve a God who is a king, and he has a kingdom. A kingdom is different than what we're used to. We're used to having a say. We like to think that we have a say, that our vote matters. Amen. We like to think that we have an idea of uh, we get to put our, our vibe, our thoughts out there to the world. But let me remind you, in the kingdom of God, there is one king, and he rules, and that is it. We are a part of a kingdom. Let me describe the kingdom of God to you really briefly. Jesus said uh, in John 18, 36, he answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom kingdom. If it were, my followers would fought to keep me from being handed over to these Jewish leaders. My kingdom is not of this world. God uh, is the ruler of a heavenly kingdom. Ephesians 1 says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now, he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also the world to come. Daniel 7 says, as my vision continued that night, I saw someone like a son of man coming with clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient one and who was led into his presence. He was given authority, honor, and sovereignty over all nations of the world so that people of every race, nation, and language would obey him. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. He is not only the king of this world, but we serve a God who is the king of every world. He is the beginning, and he was, and he is to come. We fall into the, the trap, if we're not careful, of looking at God like he is the boss. And he is, but we can compare him to the shift manager, the teacher, the boss, the, the president of the company, the governor, the mayor, the president. He is more than all of that and then some. He's above all. We serve a mighty king. Kingship is not fun for Americans. Americans, why did I say it like that? We don't do well with people telling us what to do, do we? Some of us, we would consider ourselves rebels. 
we like rebellion. There's this sin inside of us called rebellion. It doesn't need to be taught. It just shows up. And all who have kids can amen to that. Rebellion doesn't need to be taught. We have this rebellious thing that just is a part of the sin nature inside of us all that we just want to rebel. We don't like the idea of having someone who tells us what to do. Are you serious? That could be an amen point because I know y'all, y'all acting like your boss, your manager tells you something to do and you're just like, yes, sir, okay, I'm going to get right on it. No, in your spirit, in your heart, you have this rebellious, well, if I was the manager, I'd tell you what, if I wouldn't talk to people like that. You have a rebellious, so how many say I don't have a rebellious spirit? Look at you not even raising your hand because you know, look at you. I'm not, I don't have a rebellious spirit, but I'm not going to raise my hand. We are in a kingdom. We have a king, and it is our natural tendency to want to rebel. We don't like the idea that there's someone who can tell us what to do. But we have to learn to trust the king. Amen? So I thought we would take the next two hours and look at, I'm just kidding. Listen to me. I thought we could take the next few moments and look at some characteristics of our king. He's asking you today, will you trust me? Will you trust me? And I want to highlight seven characteristics of our king, and why we should trust him. Amen? Are you tracking with me so far? Number one, we serve our king because you can trust his faithfulness. Let me try that again. When I say faithfulness, I know somebody's gone through something and you have seen your king to be faithful and true. Would you just jump up and have a first praise break of the day with me? When I say, he is faithful. He is faithful. Come on. He is faithful today. 2 Timothy 2, 13 says, if you are unfaith, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. Deuteronomy 7, 9, understand therefore that the Lord, your God, is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and who obey his commands. 1 John 1, 9, but if we confess our sins, he is Faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all of uh, our unrighteousness or wickedness. Our God is faithful. It is who he is. He is consistent. He is a faithful God. In the later part of Genesis, we come into uh, the understanding of a, of a young uh, brother named Joseph whose older brothers took advantage of him and uh, uh, did not like him. Joseph is a very uh, identifiable uh, person in the Bible. We can look at Joseph's life and think, man, there are some things about Joseph that I have in common. I was picked on, I was abused, I was pushed away in all of Joseph's life. He was always dealt a bad hand. If anybody had a reason to remove themselves from a relationship with God, it was Joseph. But what does he say? In Genesis 50, he says, but Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So be. Uh, so he reassured them by, seeking, uh, by speaking kindly. Can you hear Joseph saying, 
Listen, my life has been a mess. You guys intended to harm me. You, my own brother, sold me as a slave. And all through my life, I have been pushed back. I've been pushed down. I have seen the the worst in people. I've been betrayed over and over and over again. Yet I stand here today, second in command over all of the country, to remind you today that God has been faithful. He's not abandoned you one time. He has not failed you the first time. You may have gone through a difficulty, but let me remind you today, he has not left you. He has been faithful. Can anybody attest to his faithfulness today? He is faithful, faithful, faithful. If you remember a few years ago, we had one of our kids blast, and we had this whole sanctuary almost full of kids, 300 or so in attendance, and we had this chicken character, this puppet would come out, and every time he would go to this idea, and he would say this little phrase over and over and over again, my Micah still uh, beats me to death with it, saying it all the time. He says, he is faithful and faithful, and faithful, 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 and faithful. He's faithful, 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 faithful. If you don't remember anything else today, when you wake up in the morning, sometimes we just got to look in the mirror and say, my God is faithful, and faithful, and faithful, 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 and faithful, and faithful, faithful, faithful. He is faithful today. He has not abandoned you. He has not messed up. He has not missed a mark. He is faithful. He's going to be there tomorrow when you wake up. He is going to help you tomorrow because of his faithfulness. I want to encourage you with this confession today. If you have a chance to write this down or take a picture on the screen, when I find myself feeling overwhelmed with grief, worry, or anxiety, I will remind myself that God is faithful and he has not left me. Your God, your King is faithful. Number one, we can trust his faithfulness. Number two, we can trust his wisdom. Proverbs 2 says, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Psalm says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. Romans 11, oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how uh, instructable his ways. Listen to me. God's word is full of wisdom. People, scholars have been studying this word for thousands and thousands of years, trying to get an idea of God's a, a eternal wisdom. They could, you could search this word, you can study this word. The more I learn about the word of God, I begin to realize we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of how wise and all knowing and great and perfect is the wisdom of God. You can try your very best to understand it, but you, even at your, if you spent your whole lifetime studying his word, you would barely begin to open up and get an idea of God's wisdom. He knows more. He knows more. He knows more. His wisdom is unmatched. His wisdom is unparalleled to anyone else. 1 Corinthians 13, now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely. Just as God now knows me completely. Listen to me, friend. If you are waiting to fully understand how God works in order for you to follow him, you will be waiting a long time. You will never get it. There are some of us here today, and you have gone through difficult times in your life. There has been something that has happened to you. There's been something that has broken or hurt you. Maybe someone who was supposed to take care of you has hurt you deeply. And you've been searching for 
the answer to the question, why? I just want to remind you today, you may never understand. You're trying to look at a picture only through a partial, glazy mirror reflection. You, even if you had all knowledge on this side of heaven, you still wouldn't get it. Quit asking the question, why? My son Micah is awesome, and I love him. He is crazy cool. We named him Micah Brave, which we look back and think that was a mistake. He is the most cautious, careful. We, we almost have thought about changing his middle name to Timid. Micah Timid doesn't have quite the ring. He wants to know exactly what's going to happen. If we're playing in the pool and I, I grab him and he says, what are you going to do to me? I, I, I say, I'm just going to toss you. He goes, where? I'm going to toss you over there. How far? Uh, just right, right over there. How high am I going to go? He wants to know, can I, hold, can I wear my goggles? He wants every single detail in the movement of me throwing him in the water. Some of us are like that with God. You, you want the detail of the plan. God, I'll, I'll follow you, but, but just tell me which way we're going. Uh, I'll follow you because, uh, but just tell me, I just need to know why. And some of you are like your kid, and you ask him to do something, and all they ask is why. Well, I have taught Micah pretty well. If he asks me why, I say, well, uh, what's the first reason? And he goes, because you said so. How many have had parents say, because I, I said so? Yeah? Yeah? Some of us are asking the question, why, way too much. You are living so unhappy because you're trying to understand everything. Let me just help you out today. You're going to leave here so much victory. You're not going to understand everything. You're not going to get it. Because if God told you his plan, you would just mess it up anyway. Listen to me, friend. Listen, God's wisdom is so far beyond anything. If he told you the plan, you wouldn't get it anyway. Praise the Lord God didn't tell me who I was supposed to marry before the right time. Because I would have messed that relationship up. And she's in the back of the room, and she says a big amen. <laughs> Listen to me, friends. Listen, you are not going to understand why. We, we've got to quit asking why. We've got to quit asking why. God's wisdom is so far. His, his uh, kingly ship, his, his, he, just, he just can't even describe to you. You think you can understand the plan. You can't understand the plan, my friend. I'm sorry. But we've got to stop asking why. His wisdom is far beyond anything you can understand. When I feel anxiety or worry creep in, I will remind myself that God knows more than I do. I will trust him. I will not ask why or ask to be explained to. I will just trust his wisdom. He is an all-knowing God. We serve our king today because you can trust his faithfulness. You can trust his wisdom. You can trust his provision. Let's try that again. I think that ought to be a praise break. If God's ever come through for you, you didn't think you was going to make it, but God showed up and he gave you, provided something. If that's you, and I say, you can trust his provision. Where are you today? Hallelujah, Jesus. You have provided. You have provided. God made a promise to Abraham, from your seed, you will be the father of many nations. He had a son named Isaac, and God sent him to Mount Moriah to sacrifice his son as he was following instructions, not asking why, not needing an explanation, but with everything in him, just fully committed to this thing. I had made a covenant with God. He told me, I believe his promises, and he, as he's about to kill his only son, or excuse me, not his only son, but he's about to kill the heir to the kingdom. God says, Abraham, Abraham, do not hurt the child. He looks up and sees a ram in the thicket, and he utters this phrase, Jehovah, Jireh, the God that provides. Maybe you're here today. 
and you feel at the end of your rope. You need a miracle. You're in a desperate situation. You've been praying and trusting and believing for God to come through. I pray you would hear the whisper of Abraham's spirit today in your heart that says, Jehovah Jireh, my God provides. There's somebody in this place, you know you should be tithing. But when you look down, you look at the numbers, let me just encourage you today. Jehovah Jireh. There's somebody in this place today, even this week, you got a bill, a medical bill, and you're looking at it going, there is no possible way. I just want to remind you today that your king is a good king. And he will look over your spirit today. He wants to remind you that he is the provider. Will you just stand with me in this place? This isn't in my notes, but will you just lift your hands up in this place like you are about to receive from the Lord today? Holy Spirit, if there is those in this room who are struggling financially, they're struggling to make ends meet, Father, I pray that as they put you first in their tithes and offerings, your word tells us that you are a good Father who provides for his children. They are in covenant relationship with you, Jesus. You will meet every need in Jesus' name. I pray a prayer of faith would rise up in your people today. That there would just be an atmosphere that my God's going to provide every need according to his riches and glory. If you receive that today, will you give the Lord a big hand of praise? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Matthew 6, therefore, don't be anxious, saying, what shall I eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows all that you need. He knows, he knows, he knows. He is a God that provides for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. You have been faithful, Jesus. You are a good king. You rule and reign, but yet you know the needs of your people. You have been faithful to provide. When I feel desperate, pressure, or fear, I will remind myself that God provides. I am in a covenant relationship with him. He will provide. We serve our king because you can trust his faithfulness, trust his wisdom. You can trust his provision. You can trust his record. Let me remind you today, we serve the one king who has not made the first mistake. He has not lost the first battle. He reigns supremely. He reigns victorious. He does not fail. His record is perfect like Notre Dame this season so far. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you felt the Lord for the first time in this place. We have to trust his record. We got to trust that he knows better. We will never fully understand all that God has done for us, but we know he is good and he wins. Our God is a winner. Amen. I uh, just here recently, I introduced my son to Well, let's just put it, one of the greatest things that has ever graced the face of the planet, it's called Mario Kart. Those of you who are amen and you've never played it, come over to the house this week. We'll play a little Mario Kart. It's a racing game. And so I introduced him. We started playing. And he is terrible. 
I mean, there's always 12 racers, and nine times out of 10, he's number 12. In fact, everybody's done three laps, and he's on number two. And he is just awful at it. And the way it works is you race four races, and then the champion comes up on the screen, and you can see who won out of all the four races. Well, poor thing, he just gets his heart broken every time. He, he plays, he races, and then he goes, he gets up off the couch, he goes to the front of the TV, and he's looking, and he's waiting to see his character come up as the champion, and not one time does his character even make the podium. And he says the same phrase over and over, are you kidding me? I don't know where he gets his drama from, I think it's his mama. Are you kidding me? So... Uh, after whipping him several times in the game and not showing him any mercy, uh, we finally, I finally re, uh, show him that there's a team uh, option where you can team up with friends in your house and you can race together. So with me on number one, of course, I mean, come on, always winning here. That's what I do. I'm just kidding. With me winning and him in 12th, we averaged somewhere around third place, but that's good enough because our characters show up on the podium. The first time he got up like he always does, jumps off the couch, goes and looks at the TV, sees his character getting a trophy, and shouts, I'm a champion! Listen to me, friend. You may feel like this world has just beat you down. You may feel like you do nothing but Micah in that game. You go from hitting the wall here to hitting the wall there. You're driving the wrong way. You're just trying to figure out how to get this race won. Let me remind you today, it doesn't matter how good you try. You are going to fail. But I got some great news for you. You got somebody on your team who has never lost the first race. He is on your team today. Come on, somebody get this in your spirit. Come on, you are a champion. Champion. You are a champion today, not because of how good you do, not because you woke up early this week and worked out for the first time, not because you got to work on time for the first time in three months. No, no, you are a champion today. How do you still have a job, by the way? If you, I said that, but like, if you showed up for, to work the first time after three months, uh, we need to talk. You got some serious problems. Listen, it does not matter how good you think you are at this life, how well you are put together. You are a victorious champion, not because of how good you can race, but because there's somebody on your team who never loses. Somebody get this in your spirit today. You can trust his record. It's perfect. It's perfect. I'm a little pumped. Thank you. Bless the Lord. Listen to me, friend. God is so perfect. You, you can't even, your, your mind can't even comprehend how perfect he is. Even, even you are so flawed and so messed up. Even if God may, made you perfect, just the idea of your perfection would cause prize to rise up and you would lose your perfection instantaneously. And that's a big word for me, so thank you. Listen to me, friend. You are serving a perfect God. Your mind can't even fully understand what that looks like. With your mind so flawed and your character so messed up and in a world that's so imperfect for you to serve a perfect God that has never lost, we can't fully understand. But our God is perfect. You're on a winning team. He has not lost the first battle. When I begin to feel down, when I want to dwell on my failures, I will remind myself that I am on God's team, and he only wins. Some of you have beat yourself up so many times. You, you are so disgusted with yourself, you can't even look at yourself in the mirror. If somebody treated your friend like you treat you, you would rise up so big against that. Let me just remind you today, you are a child of a perfect father, 
and he has not made the first mistake. You are not a mistake. You are not a failure. God has big plans for your life. You need to learn to look at yourself in the mirror and look at yourself like a child of God again. You are a child of a perfect king. When we do our anti-bully campaign at schools and be praying because we, it looks like we're going to continue to be able to do that virtually now. They have started bringing us into schools and showing me and Miss Kristen to uh, every student in the school systems every month. Praise the Lord for that. Come on, that's awesome. It's awesome. One thing I remind those students is that they were made for a reason and they are on purpose and there is a plan for their life. I say sometimes you got to learn to just look in the mirror and say, man, I'm looking good today. Now, I, I, I used to be able to look at my hair and say, man, my hair is so fly. Look at my hair. Now I, I go to eyebrows. Man, look at them eyebrows. Whoo, man, they're on point today. Uh, look at them. Let's get a little hairspray up in them eyebrows. Let's gel them. Don't make fun of me. I, I don't got nothing else to work with up here. Listen to me, friend. Sometimes, that was a joke. I don't really do that. So, some people are like, oh, that's why his eyebrows never move. <laughs> Listen to me, friends. Sometimes we got to remind ourselves we are on the winning team today. Quit beating yourself up so bad. Give yourself some grace. God has big plans for you. He makes you a winner. We serve our king because you can trust his faithfulness, trust his wisdom, trust his provision, trust his record, trust his love. First John 3, 1, see what a great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Perfect love cast out all fears. One of the most life-changing moments of my life was our first uh, trip to South Africa. And we had the opportunity, I had the opportunity to come and share to the public schools. And uh, it's not like the public schools here. Uh, it was like, I mean, awesome. Well, our public schools are awesome too. But it was crazy, uh, just the amount of kids. We did two days at 6.30 in the morning on both days. One of them was the younger kids and one was the older kids. And there was a room about maybe about this size just on the inside of this. This is a pretty big room with a stage about this. And they had kids come in from everywhere. They crammed in shoulder to shoulder as 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 thick as you could get them in that room. They were just everywhere. And they stood the entire time, and they just stared with listening ears. And as I presented the gospel message to them, and we began to uh, pray, I prayed over them. And then I turned the microphone back to the principal, and he uh, began dismissing. But that many students take so long to dismiss. So some one of the teachers began to sing the song, uh, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. All the students in unison started singing a part of the verse I've never, it's part of the song I've never heard before. And they started singing, he loves me so, he loves me so, he loves me so. He loves me so, he loves me so, he loves me so. He loves me so, he loves me so, he loves me so, because he loves me so. Because he loves me so. Because he loves me so. He died for me on Calvary because he loves me so. It was the most impactful. My eyes, I mean, all of us on the team, my dad's videotaping, you like, he's, the video's shaking. It was a moment of just straight clarity. Listen to me, friends. Sometimes we get so wrapped up into all the, the rules and the ideas and all of those things are good, and we ought to follow everything that this word tells us. Make no mistake about that. But at the very core, the gospel message is very simple. He loves you. He loves you. 
There is not a place you could go to outrun his love for you. He loves you more than your mind could ever comprehend. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you made, how far gone you think you are, how, how messed up your life may seem. Listen to me. If you're watching this on Facebook today and you feel like your life is just at a point of great desperation or great failure, let me just remind you of the simple fact that God loves you. Your king loves you. He loves you so much. He, spent, he sent his one and only son to die on the cross to you, to forgive you of your sins. Sometimes, church, we take the love of God for granted. We take the love of God for granted. In fact, will you stand in this place one more time? Will you lift up your hands and in your own way, in your own words, will you just thank him once again? God, you love me. I didn't deserve it. I couldn't earn it. I, I didn't do anything to deserve it, Lord, but you just love me, God. You love me. You love me. You love me. Somebody needs to be reminded of the, his perfect love cast out all fear. He loves you today. He loves you today. Come on, can you turn that prayer into a victory praise time of just thanksgiving one more time in this place? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. He loves you today. He loves you today. When I feel unloved or unwanted, I will remind myself that my father is constantly pursuing me. He loves me more than I could ever imagine. You know, when you have a son or daughter like Kristen and myself, and we look at those sweet babies, and especially when they're sleeping, they're a whole lot more easy to love when they're sleeping. <laughs> or that little girl comes and jumps in my lap and cuddles me. Or Micah comes up to me and tries to wrestle me. I look down at those sweet little kids and I think to myself, there is no way you could ever comprehend the amount of love that I have for you. There is no way you could ever understand. In the same way, your heavenly father looks down at you. Even at your worst. Even when you're making mistakes, he looks and says, oh, look at them. Come over here, angels. Look at them. Aren't they so cute? They're trying. They're trying their hardest. Yeah, I'm ready to forgive you. Yes, come back. Yes, you're part of the family. Yes, kill the golden calf. Yeah, 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 kill the calf. Put a ring on the finger. He loves you more than you could ever comprehend. He loves you today. We serve our king because he's faithful, because we can trust his wisdom and his provision and his record and his love, and his timing is perfect. We can trust his timing. Do you see Mary and Martha, their, their brother, Lazarus, the one that Jesus loved, is dead. Can you see him in desperation? Jesus, if only you would have been here yesterday. If only you would have been here. He's been dead for four days. You could have done something, Jesus. Let me remind you today, his timing is perfect. He does not go on your clock or calendar. He is not subject to when you think he ought to show up, but his timing is perfect. If you wanted God to show up for you on a Monday and he gets there on a Tuesday, Tuesday's the day he should have been there. You were messed up and not him. His timing is perfect. He created time. He is not subject to your calendar. His timing is perfect. When he's four days late, he is still right on time. Amen. How many are grateful for his timing? You've been waiting for this pandemic to be over. You have been waiting. Amen. And I'm with you. You're tired of wearing masks everywhere. You're tired of not being able to hug people. I get it. But listen, we got to trust his timing. We got to trust him. We got to trust our king. Worship team, if you want to get ready for me. When I feel like no one leaving yet, just the worship team, please. Sometimes I love you all, but you're like, oh, good, the worship team's going up. That means we're almost done. Let's go. Listen, I got 30 more minutes, so you better prepare yourselves. I just like having music playing. <laughs> 
Someone's going, I hope he's kidding. <laughs> Please, no. We got to trust him. When I feel like God has forgotten me or is moving slower, I will remember God knows better. His timing is perfect. We serve our king because you can trust his faithfulness, trust his wisdom, his provision, trust his record, his love, his timing, and we can trust his perspective. We can trust his perspective. 1 Corinthians 13, back to this verse, listen to it carefully. Now I see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. I need somebody to help me with something. <laughs> you guys never volunteer when I pick people because y'all create, you know, I bashed somebody in the head with a hammer once. If you haven't heard that story, I won't share it now because it's very depressing. Uh, I, I cut a kid's hair. I got somebody in my, Alex, come up here. Yeah, he's my buddy. Come on. This isn't a hard one. I got you, buddy. Come here right here. I got this spool of, of rope. Go ahead and take that. All right, now I want you, I got this in here. I want you to start unraveling that spool, okay? But here's the deal. It's pretty long. So you're going to go out that door. I got door stops right there if you want to put the door up. You're going to go down the hallway. You're going to go across the foyer, down this hallway, and then you're going to come right back into this door, okay? Go for it. And try not to be too long because uh, if everybody's late for lunch, they're going to blame you, not me. This is his fault now. <laughs> I hope this works out good. Let me have a little slack here. Okay. Oh, that was not what I was looking for. That's good. Go ahead. Keep going. I'm going to step on it so we can't pull it. There we go. Okay. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord. Don't worry about him. Worry about this Bible verse. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Alex? There you are. Okay, good. Man, we still got a lot on there, don't we? Go ahead. Take another round. Go ahead. Let's speed it up, though. This is a, we're running, we're running low on the clock here. Go ahead. Maybe, like, move to a little jog or something. Yeah. He, he works construction. This kind of stuff is a normal day for him. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, very good. Okay. Let me read this to you one more time. Listen carefully. 1 Corinthians 13. Now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. Let me remind you today that your king knows more than you. How we doing, Alex? Let's go another round. Keep going. This is longer than I thought. This is pretty cool. If you don't make it all the way, just come and give me a wave so I don't keep waiting on you, okay? Maybe a little faster here. This is not a stroll in the park. People are waiting here. They want to eat lunch. Listen to me, church. You serve a great king. He loves you more than you could ever know. He is faithful. He is full of wisdom. He is full of provision. Jehovah Jireh will be your provider. His record is perfect. His love is forever. His timing is perfect. His perspective is bigger than you. Listen to me, friend. Today, I want you to leave here so per perfect. Take another lap. No, I'm just kidding. Set it right here on the stage. 
set it right there. That's right there on the floor. That's perfect. Listen to me, friend. This is about a thousand foot rope. So it said on Amazon, I guess. God's perspective, his timing, he is so much more and higher and, and bigger than you could ever comprehend. Let me remind you of something today. We serve an eternal God who has eternity in mind. We don't understand eternity very well. Let me maybe give you a little bit of an idea here. Alex just ran a thousand foot rope all around this building. Let me just show you. I have about maybe six inches of green on the end of this rope representing our time here on earth. And if we aren't careful, we spend our time our energy, our worries and anxieties. We spend a whole lot of ourselves trying to get this green line in order. Worrying, having fear and anxiety about what people think about this green line of mine. What about that Facebook post somebody wrote? What about that thing somebody said to you? What about that way somebody looked at you? Can you see how small, insignificant, how little it is compared to the eternity that God is designed and looking at your life about? We get so worried about how we're going to get something taken care of. How am I going to pay that bill? How am I going to make this happen? How am I going to get this job situation figured out? And we don't think about the eternity coming. Listen to me, friend. Eternity is a long time. It's a long time. It goes on and on. I could have Alex running this cord all day long, and he says, praise the Lord, I'm not doing that. We could sit here for day after day after day as he runs this rope around this room. And we would not even begin to get an idea of what eternity looks like. You may be worried about a situation in your life. You may be worried about something happening to you. Let me just remind you today, your king is bigger. He is stronger. His wisdom is better. He knows more than you. He is looking at your life with this eternity in perspective as you worry about things that don't really matter. We have to get the important things right today. We have to get the important things right today. Alex, will you come up and uh, retie all this up? I'm just kidding. We are going to leave this rope sitting on the floor. So as you step over it to leave and do so carefully, you will be reminded that there's a whole lot more to your life than this little green space that occupies us right now. Are you tracking with me today? I said, are you tracking with me today? We have a good king. When I was in high school, it doesn't surprise you, but I was one of the coolest people in all of school. I was president of the chess club. Oh, yeah. Yep. You didn't know how cool I was, but now you do. Really? How many are chess players in this room? If you are a chess player, maybe even if you aren't, you can understand there's this pretty basic uh, strategy to the game. There's a, a, a piece on the board called the king, and he has a little cross on it on top like this. This is the king. And the object of the game is to make it to where the king has nowhere to go, that anywhere he moves, he is blocked in. If you can do that, it's called a checkmate. All you cool people, I see you. You knew what it was. All you people playing sports all the time. No, you got nothing on us. 
Listen to me. The object of the game is to keep the king from moving. But if you play and you don't understand strategy, you forget something very important. It's this idea that I want you to leave with today. And it is this. The king gets the last move. The king gets the last move. You are here today. Maybe you have been, in fact, will you stand to your feet with me today? Will you shake your body loose and get ready to receive something from the Lord? You have felt like you are blocked in on every side. You have felt depression, anxiety, worry, and fear creep in. You've been attacked in your physical body. You've been hurt emotionally. There's family problems. There's strife. There's worry, fear. You may feel like you are completely blocked in on every side. I want you to leave this place today reminded of one simple fact. It does not matter how bad or messed up or how ruined you think your life is. You may feel like the game is over. It is game, set, match. You may be looking at your life thinking, I will never get back. That was once broken. I want you to be reminded today that the king gets the last move. Will you lift up your hands and receive that today? The king gets the last move in your family, at your workplace, at your job. It doesn't matter your situation. You may feel completely broken, let down, and discouraged. Let me remind you, your king has not lost the first battle. He is perfect. He is undefeated champion. And you are on his team today. He is going to come in. He is going to step in just when you think it is over. Just when you think you are too far gone, you are going to see how good your king is today. Jesus, Jesus, somebody praise him today. Woo, Jesus, Jesus, he is not, he is not lost yet. It is not over yet. Will you close your eyes one more time? Maybe you're here and you feel defeated. You feel like you're on the losing team, like you're you're not going to make it. Maybe you need some provision. Maybe you need some wisdom. Maybe you need some help. Maybe you're just beat up, and you need God. You need the king to show up for you again. Where are you at? Without anybody looking around, honest, where are you at? Just give me a wave. I need to see. Man, I'm walking through difficulty. I'm going through a difficult time. There's a circumstance I need help with. Amen, amen, amen. Let me pray for us one more time, church. Has this been a good word for you today? In fact, will you lift up your hands? I know you've prayed a lot and you've worshiped a lot. One more time, you're going to get your victory right now. Father, I just pray over the people of God in this room. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. In Revelation, we see he wins the final battle. We are on the winning team today. Every attack that wants to come in, every attack that wants to take hold in our homes and in our hearts, we call it defeated right now in the name of Jesus. We call it defeated in the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. I pray these bodies to be made whole. I pray these finances to be made whole. I pray these emotions to be made whole. I pray this health to be made whole. I pray this, uh, Lord, these homes, these families to be made whole. In the name of Jesus, we will leave this place victorious because we serve a mighty God who is worthy of a big praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Come on, can we give the Lord one more giant hand of worship? Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord.